they built a brand new graphics engine for this and it is just stunning much smoother than the original and in general far superior to that the cutscenes are really gripping very beautifully done CGI it streamlines aspects of the first and this is almost invariably a good thing the first one had alarms also and in this one you find out how many you can afford without the mission being aborted and you can really tell what impact it has first alarm they put on second alarm they put on the helmet making headshots of any kind much more difficult and the third one cut the cord you're going home you get some new moves including the half split jump which is like the regular again you go into a kind of split you know legs out to the sides holding you up in between two walls only in this one you can jump from wall to wall kind of like in the new Prince of Persia games and thus get up to an otherwise unreachable area very cool and there's this thing called the SWAT turn where if you're on one side of an open door and you really want to be on the other side just do that move and you're almost impossible to notice as you switch to the you get a chaff grenade which disables electronics in a small area and the familiar flashbang also these first two have the best throwing system I've seen in any game you really know where what you're throwing is gonna end up you can take a nice deep breath before you snipe which is certainly something a certain <clears throat> hitman could learn something from and your enemies now use motion detectors and booby traps it's again a real challenge but not frustrating shooting is much improved upon it goes much faster and you can now open a door remaining crouched instead of standing up and making a huge target out of yourself he can now whistle which will attract attention the realism is again very high we get fake news broadcasts again the plot is really engaging and the twists hold up very well the characters are credible dialogue is clever if it does try a little bit too hard at times in this they really went for making the locations you go to very memorable and it pays off you go to France, Jerusalem one mission has you on a train I don't mean on a train as you're as in you're a passenger I mean on the train on top of the train and you will be climbing on the outside of the train that's not all other trains will pass by at high speed as you are climbing on the outside and it has this really cool detail where when that happens obviously you know following the laws of physics you will be sort of blown like halfway off and you'll only be hanging on by one arm as it passes and then you go back and can move again that mission is just awesome there's less of the silly humor in this plus it has multiplayer I honestly have not ever played that but it sounds like a ton of fun it's called spies versus mercenaries with the spies being you know like Sam Fisher the Splinter Cell and the mercenaries being like the terrorists that you usually fight in these games so you know abilities and equipment versus guns you have to either conquer or protect these canisters based on what team you are playing on and the modes are neutralization where you have to find them and destroy them extraction where you have to find them and bring them back with you or sabotage where you have to use modems to disable them this also has a really cool and quite unforgettable climax moving on to chaos theory. This one they finally address the issue of how pitifully weak Sam Fisher is at close range combat. In the first two draw your weapon if you're spotted in the first one have it drawn or you basically have no chance. In this one you can knock them out. You also get a knife so you can knife them if you please. The only real difference there is that the knife will kill them. The knife also allows you to cut holes in tents and such so that you can enter it without actually being at the entrance. This is a pretty big departure from the first two and 
with anything like that, it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. If you don't mind the effect it has on your rating, in this, kind of like in the Hitman sequels, you can basically get away with taking out whomever you want. There's less consequence. Again, from these three franchises, Splinter Cell, Hitman, and Commandos, I guess it just eventually goes there with stealth titles. Sooner or later they give up on their audience having the patience to do it properly. Or at least making that a definite requirement. With that said, this is still challenging and engaging. There are a whole slew of ways to take out enemies at close range now. My personal favorite is hanging over a railing and pulling the enemy down over you and past you. The direction controls become a bit awkward in this one and makes taking out people at short range more difficult than it has to be. This is where you get EMF vision in addition to night vision and thermal vision. And again, EMF vision is very helpful for figuring out what you can use your OCP on. Anything electrical you can temporarily knock out. Your SC-20K is changed around a bit. You could snipe with it before, but it now does have a genuine sniper attachment as well as a shotgun attachment, a very precise attachment, and finally the one we know with the launcher. This also allows you to choose your own setup for it for the following mission. You choose if you bring a sniper, a shotgun, or whatever. I didn't personally feel like it made a huge difference, but again it is kind of moving towards being easier simpler and allowing the player to just run around and shoot everybody and we have enough games for that. You really don't need every game that has a gun to allow the player to just run around and shoot everybody or at least not still allow them to complete the mission. I mean if you play the original Hitman, Hitman Codename 47, yes you can run around and shoot everything, but you're not going to win the mission. That would be ridiculous. Who's going to pay for a slaughter when they hired what they thought was an assassin? That's like getting a butcher to operate on the patient when you thought you were paying for a brain surgeon. Hacking plays a bigger role, and it's now something you actually do. You don't just click and you're done. I personally really like the feature, and I didn't find it overused. You can now also circumvent retinal scanners and keypads instead of having to find someone to use their face at the retinal scanner or having to find the code, respectively. The split jumping is the simplest and actually most awesome looking of the three. The graphics are again beefed up. Most of the cutscenes are now full CGI. A couple of them are still in-engine. In this one you get a noise meter and while it might at first glance seem redundant, it comes in handy when gauging how loud your surroundings already are. The twists get to be a little bit cliched and predictable this time around. I was still very immersed in the storyline, but the other two overall impressed me more. This does expect you to know what happened in the other two. It's again a challenge, there are now three difficulty settings, Although the difficulty level spikes here and there, but mostly it's even. We again get fake news reports, and this time also a nice detailed briefing with information from every member of your team, and on occasion also the ones you're temporarily working with. And you can even go back and listen to what someone said again if you missed something. Then you load up, which is where you choose. This has a feature where it tells you the recommended load up, the stealth loadup, and then an assault loadup. Now, I criticize that somewhat, but to be fair, this is the most open of the three. I mean, the levels are still linear, to an extent, perhaps because it is very story-driven, but so is the Hitman franchise. But you now get to choose how to take out your opponents to a greater extent than before. That has always really been the only freedom you have in these games, and 
maybe that will remain so.